In this example, we show how to use acceleration polygon method to determine the acceleration uh, of a desired point in the mechanism. Determining acceleration uh, in a mechanism is critical since inertial forces associated with that based on the second law of the Newton. Acceleration analysis is a preliminary step to determine the force on each link or joint, which is a necessary uh, step uh, for designing a link and the joints. In this problem, we have a slider crank, uh, which uh, the crank, uh, which the coupler uh, is extended into the point D. Uh, we have an angular velocity of the uh, 3 radian per second counterclockwise uh, on the crank, and also an angular acceleration of the 8 radian per square second clockwise. We want to determine the acceleration of the point D. The first step to determine the acceleration is uh, to uh, find the velocity of the different points. Uh, and uh, for this reason, we use the velocity analysis uh, using the relative velocity and velocity polygon method. We know that the uh, velocity of the point B is equal to the, uh, the crank size, which is the OB times um, the angular velocity of the crank. Uh, and uh, the amount of that, um, the magnitude of this vector uh, is uh, 12 inch per second and uh, since uh, the, the crank uh, is rotating uh, uh, counterclockwise, uh, uh, the velocity is in the counterclockwise direction, it is perpendicular to the OB and in the direction of the, uh, of the um, angular velocity. The second step uh, is to complete the full velocity analysis by constructing velocity polygon. For this reason, first uh, we are using the, uh, the relative uh, velocity uh, relationship. The velocity of the point C versus B is equal to the absolute velocity of the point C minus the absolute velocity of the point B. Just a reminder that this uh, subtraction is a vectorial uh, subtraction. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, if we are going to uh, re, uh, reconfigure, uh, reformat the, the subtraction, we are going to have the velocity of the point C is equal to the absolute velocity of the point B plus relative velocity of the point C versus B. Next is to draw the velocity of the point B. We start from the origin, we have the magnitude and the direction of this velocity. Next, since we don't know uh, the magnitude of the velocity of the point C, uh, but we know this is absolute velocity uh, and uh, it, is, uh, it is parallel to the ground. So we show that with the uh, dotted line uh, passing through the origin O prime. Velocity of the uh, relative velocity of the v, uh, v, uh, CB uh, or the relative velocity of the point C versus B uh, is uh, perpendicular to the link BC, uh, but we don't know uh, the magnitude of this vector. So we show it with the hidden line, as shown in the picture. These two hidden lines intersect each other at the point C prime, and the vector uh, connecting uh, the uh, origin to the C prime, uh, showing the velocity of the point C, the absolute velocity of the point C, and the vector from the B prime to the C prime, showing the a relative velocity of the point C versus B. By measuring the scale polygon veloc uh, velocity, uh, we will get the uh, velocity of the point C and the velocity, uh, relative velocity of the C versus B. The next step is um, to determine acceleration components using the relative acceleration theorem. The acceleration of the point C versus B, the relative acceleration, is equal to the uh, absolute acceleration of the point C minus absolute acceleration of the point B. Reformatting this is going to be uh, acceleration of the point C equal to the acceleration of the point B uh, plus the relative acceleration of the C versus B. And if we decompose each of these acceleration in the two components of the norm and the tangent, we are going to have this uh, equation, this vectorial equation. We see that uh, each of these acceleration uh, of the point C, B, 
and the relative acceleration of the c versus b is decomposed into its two components of the normal and the tangent. And these two components are uh, basically um, perpendicular to each other uh, and the resultant of each of them is going to end up the, the total acceleration. It is recommended to determine each of these components separately and uh, show it in a, um, a table which is uh, shown as following. Uh, the, each um, the row of the table showing the magnitude and the direction of the, each of those uh, components. The first one is a normal acceleration of the point C. Since uh, point C is located on the uh, slider and it has a rectilinear uh, motion, uh, the, uh, the normal acceleration of that point is equal to the, uh, zero. The tangential acceleration of the point C is unknown, uh, but we know that the direction of that is going to be parallel to the ground. The normal acceleration of the point B, which is basically located on the crank and has a circular motion, is uh, equal to the um, uh, square of its velocity divided by the radius of the rotation, which is here is a, a VB squared divided by the length of the crank OB, and it is going to be 36 inch per square second. The normal acceleration is parallel to the radius of the rotation and it is toward the center of the rotation and it is parallel to the OB. The tangential acceleration of the point B is equal to the uh, radius time at the angular acceleration. So here we have the OB as the length of the crank times alpha which is going to be 32 inches square per square second and it is going to be perpendicular to the OB in the direction of the uh, angular uh, acceleration. The relative acceleration of the ACB, the normal component, is equal to the square root of the square of the uh, uh, relative velocity of the uh, VCB divided by the length of the uh, 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 of the coupler BC. If you remember, we found uh, the uh, velocity uh, of the relative velocity of the VCB in the last step. So if we plot those uh, values, uh, we are going to get 8.9 inch per uh, square uh, second uh, for the uh, normal acceleration of the ACB. The normal acceleration, uh, relative acceleration, is parallel to the uh, coupler, parallel to the BC from C towards B. Since we don't know the angular acceleration of the coupler BC, we don't know the magnitude of that uh, the vector, but we know that it is going to be perpendicular to the BC. All the units in the acceleration are in the inch per square second. Next is to complete the full acceleration analysis by constructing acceleration polygon. We start with the vector uh, of the uh, acceleration of the uh, point B, which we have the most uh, amount of the information about that. We draw the AB normal from an origin of the O double prime and we continue that with the tangential component of it, AB tangent. And the end point is going to be uh, the total acceleration if we are going to uh, draw a, a vector from the O double prime to the B double prime. Since uh, the uh, relative acceleration uh, is between B double prime and C double prime, we start from this point and draw the vector ACB normal, which is going to be uh, parallel to the CB. We know the magnitude, and we know it is from the uh, uh, is parallel to the BC from uh, point C towards B. We don't know the uh, the remaining two uh, acceleration AC uh, T and also uh, ACB uh, tangent, but we know the direction of both of them. So we draw uh, the, uh, the directions uh, of each of these accelerations. Uh, uh, one of them is perpendicular to the BC, which, uh, uh, which uh, basically the acceleration of the, uh, the tangent acceleration of the relative uh, the acceleration of the C versus B is located in that uh, line. And also uh, the parallel line to the ground, which uh, is basically 
and the acceleration of the C is going to be located on this. These two hidden lines intersect each other at the C double prime uh, and uh, basically the two uh, the vectors of the AC uh, the connecting the O double prime to C double prime and uh, showing the tangential um, component of the uh, of the uh, point C acceleration of the point C which is equal to the total acceleration of the point C. Next is to find out the uh, corresponding point of the D double prime in the acceleration polygon. We know that uh, the, the useful uh, the, uh, property of the, the acceleration polygon is that each point in the mechanism have a corresponding point on the acceleration uh, polygon. So uh, the next step is to find out where is the uh, location of the uh, corresponding point of the D in the acceleration polygon, which we call it D double prime. We know that the uh, basically the ratio of the BC over BD uh, in the actual mechanism is equal to the, uh, the ratio of the B double prime, C double prime uh, over the uh, B double prime, D double prime in the acceleration polygon. So if we substitute the actual numbers from the mechanism, 6 inch over 10 inch is equal to the, we measure the distance between B double prime, C double prime on the acceleration polygon, we can find uh, the length of the B double prime, D double prime. In order to find that length, uh, to find the D double prime, we connect B double prime to the C double prime and extend it uh, to uh, find the point of the D double prime based of the length of the B double prime, D double prime. The rest is connecting O double prime to this point, which uh, resulting in the acceleration of the point D, and this is the total acceleration of the point D. Measuring the uh, scaled uh, acceleration polygon uh, will uh, um, give us the uh, acceleration of the point D. As it is shown, uh, this method is valid to find out uh, the uh, acceleration of the any desired point in this mechanism uh, using the acceleration polygon.